Cats and Critters is a custom game mode that can be found in the StarCraft II arcade. It's an asymmetrical cat and mouse type game involving two cats versus six critters. Their goals are the same, kill the other side. In this video, I'll try to explain the basics of the critter's perspective first, so you can be a bit more informed going to your first couple of games. I'll cover the cat more extensively in another video, but this one also covers some basics about the cat so you won't get totally blindsided. Keep in mind that the game makes you play critter for the first two games. At the start of the game, if you were lucky enough to be one of the six critters, you're faced with a choice between six races. They are the mouse, toy, flea, bird, snake, rat, and a button to random if you can't choose. Before you play two completed games, you'll be gated to play only mouse and toy as the creators have determined that you can't have any fun. But they're simpler to play, so they're better to learn on. But we don't really care about that because you have this video, so I'll teach you instead. Once you've selected your creator's race, you'll have to wait for the game to start. After the game starts, you're free to go anywhere on the map to start creating your base and working on your economy. Keep in mind that the cats, although tucked into their cat beds at the start, will be watching you. That's why you gotta know the map. Good thing there's a sandbox mode which allows you to view the map like this. If you'll notice, there are a bunch of green question marks denoting places where you can place your base. Cats and Critters has a system where each question mark can be one of four things. Empty, small rock, big rock, or a cat den. If it's empty, great. You can place down your base immediately. If it's a small rock, even better. You can clear this rock for 25 cheese and place down your base afterwards. If it's a big rock, fantastic. You'll be able to clear the rock for 50 cheese, which is the exact cost for one worker, so you can get a head start. In order to claim the cheese from within the rock, you need to kill it and then walk over it with a unit or place a building on it. Lastly, we have cat dens. I'll explain what they do later, but just know that they can take up a spot and you generally don't want to base too close to them at the start. They can be seen on the map after the game starts as the four big squares. Once you've made your first base, the first thing you want to do is work on your economy. This comes in two parts and there are many different ways of ensuring that you succeed. First, let's talk about the extreme basics which involve the base Starcraft mechanic of harvesting minerals, or cheese as it's called in Cats and Critters. Every critter's race's main character can farm cheese by right-clicking the blue crystals surrounding these base spots. After a brief harvesting delay, you'll automatically run towards a resource point, which is your base. Starcraft players will know this as a nexus, command center, or hive from the base game, and deposit it. You will harvest 5 cheese at a time, slowly building towards 50 cheese, which is a cost for most races workers. Snake and rat are the exceptions, but we'll talk about them later. Once you create a worker, it'll do exactly what your main character does. But that's all they can do. And that's all they'll ever do. Harvest cheese, return it to base so that you can make more workers. So they can harvest more cheese to make more workers. To harvest more cheese to make more workers. To harvest more cheese to make more workers. You'll only be able to make as many workers as your economy level allows. On screen, you'll see the breakpoints for each economy level. They're also color-coded within the game, so you can easily see the economy level of each player in the game. You can also see it if you're a cat. In order to progress your economy level, you need to select your base, which I'll now refer to as your town hall, and click the button at the bottom. You'll be able to see each economy upgrade, but you can only select the next one available. The hotkeys QWER will be the same regardless of which race you pick, but the icons will look different. So hopefully now you understand both parts of your economy. One, your workers, and two, your economy level. But it's not that simple, right? Making workers costs cheese and time. Progressing the economy level also costs cheese and time. Two minutes to be exact, although most arcade games run on faster, so it's more like 100 seconds real time. Regardless, both of these things can be attacked. You can lose workers to a cat attack, and you can also lose your town hall the same way. Remember, if you lose your town hall, your economy upgrade won't go through. Your early game goal in most games will be to get at least economy 1. This is for a couple of different reasons which I'll list on screen and you can just pause to read it. Now let's get into some of the fun stuff. What are some ways to ensure you succeed in developing a strong economy? Before we explore some of them, you need to understand a couple of key mechanics when it comes to the cat. First, the cat itself cannot see over the walls. As a critter, you can. This means that at any given time as a cat, they could be watching. So it's a good thing cats have a sniffing ability. The sniff mechanic is quite simple in theory, but a bit hard to think about in real time. When a cat uses their sniff ability, it creates a huge circle around them for 10 seconds that works like a hot and cold system. It can detect town halls as well as the critters themselves. It has three stages, green, yellow, and red. If there are no targets within 32 range, which is about a ninth of the entire map, a green question mark will appear above the cat's head. If there are targets within 32 range, it'll be a yellow exclamation mark. 
The key part of this is when there are targets within 16 range. A red exclamation mark will appear above both the cat's head as well as whatever is being sniffed. So, putting all this together means that as a critter, if you either see the cat itself coming or you receive a red exclamation mark on your town hall or leader, you know it's time to evacuate. Evacuating is pretty simple as a concept, but you have to get the micro details right. You'll find networks of back alleys and escape routes that allow for the critters to escape through while also blocking the cats themselves from being able to attack you directly. They can, however, use a myriad of tools to catch you while you're inside these tunnels, so don't get complacent. The cat should also be wary of your micro, if you have any. Pause now to read all the details about evacuating that I'm too lazy to voice over. Okay, now let's actually get into the fun stuff, defenses and diversion tactics. The simplest way to defend your base is to use walls. Every race has their own wall with varying levels of efficacies as well as abilities. For example, the fleas wall has a good chunk of health that shits out some baby fleas upon dying to stall even further as well as attack the cat itself. These are extremely efficient for early games and can stall about 8-10 to 10 seconds each and can be supplemented further with units. Units are another kind of defense that can discourage or even prevent the cat from bothering you while you tech your economy. Depending on which race you take, you'll have different early game units to help defend your wall. In this example, we're using the Flea Slime Roaches, which slow attack speed as well as move speed, and can have quite a bit of range. Typically, you'll only be stalling the cat as opposed to outright killing them. Again, this is to try and make sure you get your economy upgrade finished. The cat, however, can completely forego your wall and shoot your town hall if it knows it's there, given enough energy, of course. To prevent this, you can wall further out from your town hall. Another key component of defenses are your turrets. Turrets as well as walls both scale in cost depending on how many you've created so far and reset down a level for each one that you lose. This prevents super early stacking of said defenses but it also means that they're extremely cheap when placed sparingly. Turrets are very susceptible to the hairball barrage skill as they die in two hits but if placed properly can be super efficient for draining energy as well as health from cats for how much they cost. If you remember what I mentioned earlier about town halls and critter leaders being sniffable you'll be able to understand why this next strategy works so well. Basically, you can use your main critter to distract sniffs and give false positives on where exactly your base is. Obviously, they can check every spot, but being as much of an ass pimple as possible, especially in the early game where the cat doesn't always have loads of energy upgrades and technology, is really effective. It can even lead to clutch moments where you just stall the right amount of time for your economy upgrade to finish. You can even create fake outposts that don't necessarily protect your economy directly, but will distract the cat anyways as there are other key things that you could defend and bait them with, namely your army technology. This is where you produce your units as well as research upgrades. Every race has a couple of buildings to manage, but you typically won't be juggling more than 3-4 to four buildings, unlike real StarCraft, which has you memorizing around 10. Pause again to read some extra details that will conclude the basics of early game critter play. Now that you've established some basic defenses and teched into a couple of economy upgrades, you're in a good position to do a couple of things. Depending on the game state, you might want to either go on the offensive and attack the cat dens or sweep some units that the cats have produced around the map, or maybe play more defensively and assist teammates in getting their econ upgrades, or even turtling up in a corner. Everything is variable, but we're going to focus specifically on how the critters literally end the game. Cat dens are huge structures that produce small defense units called mobile yarn cannons. They're these little critters that attempt to defend the cat dens themselves when struck, but are otherwise idle as they cannot see over the walls. They can still hit you if you're dumb enough to walk through the line of sight though, so don't do that, idiot. They scale up over time, so if you're free to hit them early, then absolutely do so. You can hit them with any kind of attack you want. Ground or anti-air as they count as both. You can hit them with any combination of units you want, and it'll take too long to go over each individual strategy, so I'll leave that for the critter leader guides. All you need to know is that if you need to kill both of the cat dens associated with each cat in order to actually kill them. If you kill the cats without clearing the cat dens first, they will simply respawn after a delay. That also scales with time. That doesn't mean that killing the cat is pointless, however, as making them take it down can be a huge tactical advantage for your whole team. And with that, I've gone over pretty much all the basics of how the critter side plays, but I'd recommend that you actually go ahead and play the game to learn. My final tip, and probably the most important one, is if you die, don't fucking leave the game. You can get resurrected. I know everyone wants to be the hero, but you can still do things as a ghost as well, like buffing your allies' units, slowing down and annoying the cat, or even turning to your teammates' units, heroes included. Stop fucking leaving the game. You've got nothing better to do anyway, so you might as well stop and learn.
Okay, thanks for watching. If you wish to join the official Cats and Creators Discord, you can use the link in the pinned comment or the description below. I'll also have a link to my server where I play this game with my viewers often.